Johann's Awakening. The Journey Johann opened his eyes. He looked ahead. The ocean waves were pounding the surf. He stood up on his legs and looked about. The air was cool and the soft ocean soothed him. He began to recall a vivid dream he had had that night. The Lord had come and spoken to him. No, it had not been a dream. Johann flapped his wings and ran toward the water. He lifted from the ground and flew high up into the sky. He circled the beach and scanned his eyes across the sand which spread out for miles. He spotted the lone sand hill with the bush at top. He flew down low and circled around it several times. Yes, this was it. He landed and walked up to the bottom of the dune. He was just a few feet from the bush. There was nothing there but the lone bush. The Lord's visit had not been a dream. But now Johann's whole life began to feel like it had been a dream. Had he really left the flock and flown up to the heavens? All of this now seemed as though it hadn't really happened at all. Who am I, he thought. He began to panic and wanted companionship. But the beach was deserted, the sun just halfway up over the horizon, and not a thing in sight but sand dunes, waves, and a vast blue ocean. He thought back, and he remembered the Lord's message. Live in the present, Johann gazed out at the ocean. This is the present, he thought. There was nowhere to go, nothing to obtain, not anything to gain, just this, the beach and the vast ocean before him. That was the Lord's message. A steady wind from over the ocean blew on Johann's face. The ocean was turning a brilliant blue, red, and yellow from the morning sun's reflection, and the breaking white caps glittered like slivering tinsels up over the choppy ocean surface. It was nice, it was relaxing. Yet it was something of which Johann had seen multitudes of times. In it he saw no answer, no resolution anywhere to his restless mind. So, as he had so many times done, Johann walked along the beach in the hard-packed line where it met with the water, thinking, wondering, and occasionally digging his beak into the sand to dig up a crayfish or a clam. Where had those great heavens gone? Johann little cared. All the wonderful spiritual things he had experienced were no better than this rock. In the present along the beach, the Lord had been true, but it was a hard pill to swallow. Johann always had the energy to keep going on out of want for something more, to find the answer and to imagine returning triumphantly to those ignorant gulls that he had left. Yes, as the Lord had said, Johann had truly wanted to be the greatest of Gauls, and it was that which had kept him going, searching, imagining, desiring for all the past many years. But as he accomplished each goal, that mystery had gone stale, and he each time had looked to accomplish more, more, and more. Upon reaching the highest of all heavens, he had found not paradise, but a brick wall because his road had ended. There was nothing left to look for. Now he had to come full circle back in the world of pain and misery. Yet he was neither in pain nor miserable. He had plenty of food, for he had learned to live on little. And he had ample time to think. But which way was he to think now, having accomplished everything and nothing? Then he remembered, this is what the child of God had told him. His God was nothing and everything, both at the same time. This was to be Johann's new challenge, to achieve everything and nothing, all at the same time. He was excited and happy again, and with this new goal, without fear. That day he scavenged the beach. Eating just a little, he spent most of his time contemplating the pristine reality before him. He felt good and alive, yet he was here on what he had once seen as a mundane world of hardship and struggle. He had not before seen the world as he was beginning to now. He had always wanted more, but now more was not an option. Johann flew out over the ocean, rising high into the sky, and glided for hours. The ocean breeze repeatedly pushed him up without his lifting a feather, or using a single muscle in his wings. He just glided and sailed through the air, over the waters all day that day. It became a regular thing with Johann, but after several weeks he began to worry about the old flock 
that he had long ago left and returned later to visit, and was then banished from by the older gulls. Where had they gone? This beach seemed deserted. He looked about. In the distance, he saw a lone figure. He flew to investigate. She was an old woman, skinny and wearing ragged clothes. She had a folding chair beside her and a blanket under her feet on the sand. She was standing. Johann circled and landed a good twenty feet from her. The old woman looked at Johann and smiled. You see me catch fish, she asked in broken English. Johann was curious and walked closer. Her face was speckled with brown and white splotches all over, and she looked like she could have been of any nationality, or perhaps all nationalities, by the curiousness of her features. She was holding a fishing pole in her hand, but Johann didn't see any fish anywhere. You see me catch fish, she repeated. Her voice had a spontaneity that was bubbly and alive. Johann shrugged his wings, not knowing what to do. You no see? the woman asked. Not knowing how to respond, Johann flew on. He landed on a dry sand dune well behind the beach. A cypress tree above him gave him shade. He chirped. He looked about the beach, scanning his eyes from one side to the other. He sat down and watched, wondering. He could not do this forever. What had the Lord told him? Life once again was growing old with the repetition. Yet he felt a mystery about it now. There was something hidden, something here on the beach in the present that he could not yet see. Johann flapped his wings and took off in the air. It was time to move on to another beach or to somewhere else, somewhere. He flew a long distance along the coastline. Sand dune after sand dune pitted the landscape. He tired, but continued to fly. Every now and then, he flew down to the beach and bathed in the water and rested. Then he flew on, looking for something that was right here in front of him, but not here in front of him. He could feel it in his bones, but whatever it was that the Lord had revealed to him, it had not quite surfaced. Sunset was near. Johann would have to stop and find a place to bed. He saw a group of rocks ahead, way out on the beach, being pounded by the surf. This was the place. He landed on the highest rock and observed his surroundings. There was shelter here and ample food among the rocks. He sat and watched the sun set into the horizon far off in the ocean. A cool fog blew in. Johann again thought about the child and about how anxious Johann had been to bed down for the night and awake the next morning after hearing the child's words. He again felt that. The wind whipped against his face. This world was indeed as great as any world he had seen. Caw, 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 Johann jumped up. Who was that? The sun was just breaking over the mountains behind him. The sea was still dark, blue-black with white caps glittering. Seagulls stood all about him, on all sides. He was in the midst of a flock. Who are you? Johann asked. Caw, replied a large gull just feet away from Johann. The gull wasn't responding. He is a dumb gull, Johann guessed. Caw, the bird repeated. Johann cawed back. The gull turned his head sideways and focused an eye on Johann. He said nothing, but Johann understood, not knowing how. This bird was with a flock that had lived here many years, and it knew Johann without having met him. Johann was something of a legend with the birds here, a bird who had gone his own way and then returned with extrasensory powers, and who had taken others from the flock and taught them things that the gulls had never known. Johann asked him what had happened to all the others. Most had passed on, the gull revealed, but they had come back again as youngsters, and they had not forgotten Johann. His legend had been handed down from gull to gull over generation upon generation. Most gulls don't live so long as you, the gull explained. Johann wondered whether he would still be banished from the flock, the gull understood. No, you will not, he told Johann, and Johann was relieved 
by not just the good news, but by this other seagull's mastery of spoken language, not spoken verbally, actually, but communicated precisely in some inner way. Now it was Johann's turn to let out a caw. Caw! Other gulls had gathered around. Then they took off into the air almost at once. Johann stood motionless and scanned his environment. Then he too took off with the flock. He was back now with his old group, and as the Lord had said, he was not here to teach anything to them. He was here to learn from them, from the beach and the water and from the present. Inherently, he knew it. What a grand feeling it is, he thought. If a seagull could cry, he would have done so then. In the next few weeks, Johann stayed close with the flock, rummaging the rocks for food and scanning the ocean for that small fish that had strayed too close to the surface. They flew together, up high, and basked in the warm sun on the beach. He watched the little ones hatch and grow quickly into adult birds. He found a girlfriend and chased her across the beach. She would turn and chase him. All was good for Johann, too good, he imagined, and he wondered what may lay ahead for him and this flock that he had become so endeared to. But just as all things had done, this world too began to become too predictable and monotonous. Johann knew and understood that this present, as he witnessed, was not to be his final abode. In time, he knew he would have to break from the flock, but the Lord had chastised him for doing this once before. What was he to do, he wondered. Johann began thinking that he must fly back the other way from which he had arrived here, and return to the sand dune with the bush atop where the Lord had met and spoken to him. He needed direction from the Lord once again, for this life had not satisfied Johann. But this was not to be, for the Lord knew what was on Johann's mind, and came to him again that evening, in the dead of night. Johann, the Lord said, and Johann hearkened to his voice. Where are you, Lord? asked Johann. For I hear your voice, but I cannot see you in the darkness. There was no moon that night, and the beach was black. Johann could see nothing but could hear the roar of the ocean hitting the rocks below him. I am where I am, the Lord replied. I am here, I am there, what does it matter? Johann felt relief that the Lord had found him, and that he would not have to abandon the flock, for he had grown close to the other gulls and wanted to continue with their company. You must leave the flock now, the Lord said, for it is time to go home. A car pulled up and the driver opened the passenger door. Get in, the driver ordered, and Johann dutifully hopped up into the passenger side seat of the car. The driver had a small frame. He was the child that had sat atop the sand dune next to the bush. You called for me, the child said. I came as quickly as I could. My car has a supercharger and is fuel injected and has 16-inch mag wheels. It is very fast. Johann was quickly coming to realize that he had died out on the rocks and was in heaven. He had been an old bird and it was time. He worried about the other gulls, but he realized that such a thing was not uncommon. Seagulls had a harsh life out on the beach, and many did not survive long. Where are we going? Johann asked. But as he finished his sentence, he found himself snuggled atop a rock, overlooking the beach. He had not died, he had been dreaming. The wind howled, but the air was not cold. Johann felt good, knowing all his friends were snuggled in sleep near him. He quickly fell back to sleep. Johann woke up, still on the rock overlooking, and, and above, and in the ocean. Everything he saw and heard this morning felt intense and wonderful. The ocean, the fine, pristine sand dunes about him, even the rock that he sat upon. He remembered the beach of fine gold that he had witnessed just months ago in the highest of heavens. That scene had made him sad, for though it had been the grandest of all displays he had ever witnessed, its brilliant and vibrant colors had given him an empty feeling. It had been a superficial grandiosity, formed by an outward focus, not really anything but light in colors, as grand as it had appeared, 
but this very ordinary of beaches before him today was alive in every way, feeling deeply intense, like something of greatness was just below it, and the wind on his face, the smell of the ocean, and the flowers and the bushes nearby. He imagined now that he was truly in the process of beginning to see me. The beach was awakening to another day as it did every day. One by one, the gulls among him woke up, scanned their habitat, then arose and took off in flight. As the morning progressed, Johann looked about, enjoying the sounds and sensations, gulls flying about cawing, the sea waves roaring against the sand, the wind rising and then falling still, bushes and trees rustling in the rhythmic pattern of the wind. There is no world better than this, Johann imagined. But as the day wore on, Johann became restless again, knowing full well that this grand residence of gulls was just a resting place, and whatever he was to learn in, wherever he was to proceed, would come out of this world, but was not this world, not quite, that something more was lurking below the surface. It was what he had sensed early that morning. As sunset arrived, Johann again flew back to his preferred rock, marked out now as Johann's and the other gulls avoided the spot. He thought about this and how those gulls behaved. They seemed polite and considerate, not fighting over food and territory like the gulls had done years back when Johann was young. He wondered about it. Perhaps his many years spent struggling to find enlightenment had worn off on them. He realized now what the magic feeling about this beach was. It was brotherhood. The gulls understood their place in the world and knew the connection between themselves and the other gulls. Perhaps they even were aware of their connection with the world itself. The secret, as the child had instructed, had not been found in Johann's outward search, nor had it been found when many gulls created a paradise in heaven with their thoughts. It had been found by living the day, not seeking after rewards, just living and respecting others and the reality they shared. How simple was the way it was knowing me. Johann, you are not through yet, the soft voice whispered. Johann looked around but saw no one. The voice had been the wind. A story. Johann was awoken by a young, excited gull. What time is it? Johann asked, realizing that morning had come. We're being attacked, the gull cried, rising to his feet. Johann looked about the beach. A swarm of gulls circled at a very fast speed. He focused his eye the better to see. There must have been about twenty of them, large, older gulls. His group would be no match for them. The gulls watched as the intruders circled down close to the sand and landed. They all stood in a perfectly straight line, their heads erect. Then one at the center stepped ahead. He must have been the leader of the flock. Johann focused his eye on the bird, for it looked familiar. Floyd, Johann cried, and the large bird turned his head toward Johann. Johann and Floyd had flown together many times long ago when they had learned to fly fast and rise up into the heavens. Johann had taught Floyd the speed of flying and the mechanics of the higher realms. Johann, the bird said, showing alarm, what are you doing here? I am a seagull, Johann said. Where else should I be? I cannot believe it, Floyd replied. You, Johann, a traitor to the cause. Cause? The cause the cause of knowledge. You of all birds have sold out. A second bird stepped out and stood beside Floyd. Johann recognized him too. He was Baba Ram, the highly evolved gull who had taught Johann to move instantly from one place to another. Baba Ram and Floyd had a formidable presence. Do not be alarmed, Baba Ram said. We have come to save you. Ha! Johann yelled out, gleaming. Nobody here needs any saving except maybe from you. 
Baba Ram and Floyd looked severely at Johann, and Baba Ram spoke. Friend and comrade, if you've chosen to give in to the world and its evils, then you have made your choice. But we offer life and advanced knowledge to any who will listen. Come, my flock, reject the folly of this world and find the path of the learned. Johann's flock looked about and conversed together. They are right, said one. We stay here and we die. Others began agreeing, yet Johann felt they were moved more by fear than desire. But Johann knew he could outfly both Floyd and Baba Ram, for Johann had been the fastest of all birds, had taught Floyd all he knew, and had risen with greater ease between the many heavens than had any of the others, and could reside on even the highest of them for great lengths of time. He lifted his wings, preparing to tuck them back behind him to emulate the human's fighter planes and fly faster than any other gull could fly. Johann surmised when the flock saw how much faster and elegant he was flying, they would reject Floyd and Baba and remain at the beach with him. But as he began his running start, an image of the burning bush came into his mind. He stopped and lowered his wings, still thinking. He watched as the young gulls followed Floyd, Baba Ram, and their group. But he did nothing, for the Lord had instructed Johann to refrain from such displays of aptitude. He wondered about whether it was right. In the days ahead, Floyd showed the gulls how to fly at great speeds, while the Baba instructed them on meditating and how they could transport themselves from one place to another instantly. Johann just sat and watched, feeling a bit out of place. In time, some of the gulls began snickering at Johann. Look at the old stupid gull, one said, and the others laughed. Still, Johann did nothing. One day, far off toward the hills, a tall figure stood, looking out toward Johann and toward the ocean. Johann strained to see who this figure was. It was a thin human man in a bright orange robe holding a staff. Johann flapped his wings in a running start and flew over toward the man. He circled about him and slowly landed and walked close up toward him. It was the Buddha in the guise of an ordinary man. Johann watched him, awestruck, and the man opened his mouth. But before he could speak, he became the child, and the child spoke. Johann, how are you? the child said. How am I? You must be kidding. We've been overrun by a foreign flock. But they are your friends, aren't they? the child said. Yes, they were once, but I left them when you instructed me to go back to the flock, and here I learned what life is about. With the ordinary birds, I came to understand me as you instructed. Please respond when I speak, the child said. How are you? I am terrible, Johann replied, surprised by the child's blunt words. Look at what Floyd and Baba Ram have done. What? What have they done? They've taken over our flock, and now it's me who is wrong. You are wrong, the child said. Good grief, Johann cried. What am I to do? Every good story needs conflict, the child said. Every good story must have a good guy and a bad guy who the good guy must overcome. In Baba Ram's eyes, you are the bad guy. In your eyes, it is him. What am I to do, Johann cried. I don't need any of this. I was happy sitting on the beach watching the other gulls fly, flying in the cool air and all. Were you? said the child. Johann wondered. The child's point was valid. He had been happy with all of this, but it had soured with time, just as all things seemed to, with the passing of time. You had become unhappy with your life, and you called me. I came. You mean that night when you came and picked me up in your car, Johann said? That was a teaser. I flew in from the sky at speeds unimaginable to the normal gull. Good grief, Johann replied. You are... Who now? Need I say? I am Floyd, and I am Baba Ram. I am giving you your next lesson. You have not finished learning them yet. But, uh, Mr. Child, I, I don't know your name. Call me Starfish, the child replied. Uh, Mr. Starfish, my good friend and teacher, 
What am I to learn from Floyd, whom I once taught to fly fast and gracefully? Or from Baba Ram, who once taught me how to move instantly from one place to another place, in which I mastered better than all the other devotees and students? Your lesson comes as a story, Starfish replied. All life tells a story. You are bored when you are absent from a good story. Good stories have heroes and villains. The hero usually wins. In this story, you are the hero, viewed from your eyes. In this story, Floyd and Baba Ram are the heroes. You are the villain, because you are, in their way, and threatened them. I didn't mean to, Johann said. You could fly faster than any of them if you wanted to, and you could move easier between any heaven and could reside in the highest of heavens longer than could Floyd or even your teacher Baba. You threaten them with your knowledge. So then I should be the good guy, not them, shouldn't I? Then you would be like them, the child replied. So they, not me, are the good guys? In their minds, yes. It is their identities. They need their identities. How ironic it was, Johann imagined, that the roles had reversed. And it seemed no matter which side Johann was on, he came out as wrong. Starfish understood what Johann was thinking. I gave you a lesson, he said. Digest and learn. Learn what? That I am the perpetual bad guy no matter what I do? You were always the good guy, the child replied. You were always the good guy until they conquered the bad guy who was you. What? You were the good guy and bad guy, both at the same time. You were the storyteller and the story told. You are everything created, but you are not anything created. What kind of riddles are these? the gull asked. Rise above the story and you will see me. With that, the child turned back into the thin man in the robe. But he wore two robes now, one a bright orange and the other a faded yellow, the orange robe fresh and bright in color. Johann stood watching, saying nothing. The man in the robe opened his mouth to speak. Go now to your flock. Never leave them. Leave them quickly. With that, the image faded away in a thick fog, rolling in from the ocean, and he was gone. The Cosmic Egg. Back on the beach with the other birds, Johann sat daily on the large rocks above the beach, watching Floyd teach the young ones to fly fast, and Baba Ram give lessons in spiritual prowess and in loving one another. Fall came, then winter, and Baba Ram and Floyd and their followers flew off into the heavens for warmer realities. Left here was all of Johann's flock. Although many of the local gulls had flown and learned from the intrusive spiritual masters, none had left the beach to follow them. Johann never asked why, but he was glad that they had not. The weather turned cold, windy, and rainy, but it felt good. It was the best of winters that Johann had ever remembered throughout his long and memorable life. Spring arrived, and the Lord again visited Johann. He came walking along the beach as a young man holding a staff. His hair was long and unkempt. He had a beard that was cut short and trimmed and was wearing a white robe. The man came up to Johann and stopped a few feet away. He had the face of Jesus. Do you like my story? Jesus asked. Oh, Jesus, I am unworthy, Johann replied. But the man holding the staff looked confused. I said, call me Starfish, the man said and his form was that of the child. Do you like my story? he repeated. Story? What story? Johann asked. This story, the child said, raising his hand up and waving it about the beach in a full circle. This story? What story? Johann replied, not knowing what else to say. You have forgotten my words, the child said. Remember my words, and you will find life. Tell me more about this life that you speak of, and how I may find it, Johann replied. You have found life, but you do not yet know it, the child said. 
all belongs to you, and none can take it from you. Why, are the other gulls happy? Why don't they fight? It is because they bask in your light, and they will be with you forever, yet you may go wherever you wish. What light? Johann asked, thoroughly confused. Look at the spatial reality that leads away from you in every direction, and which grows smaller and fades in color with distance. All this is yours. You have earned it. The Lord gives you the space between you and everything that you see. This space is the Lord's power, and he gives it freely to all who love him. You have learned to love God, and you now hold the power of all creation. The child turned back into the image of Jesus and walked slowly on. Johann watched until he faded into the light fog which rolled onto the beaches from the ocean. That evening, as the sun was setting, Johann flew up to the rock where he always slept. He snuggled down on it, looking about at the other gulls, who also nestled down for the night. He fell asleep. Before him was a parking lot paved with asphalt, white striped lines waiting for cars that had not yet arrived. The asphalt surface was hot on his feet. He walked across to an area shaded by a tree and felt comfortable enough there to remain a while. A drunken man was sitting propped up against a wall facing the lot. Hey, little gull, come here and I'll tell you a story, the drunkard said. Johann focused his eyes on the man. He seemed harmless enough, so Johann approached him and sat down beside him. See that fancy car, the man said. I wish I had one like it. Johann looked. In the middle of the empty lot was a single bright red car with big mag wheels. Johann was astonished. He had seen that car before. The old man turned and looked at Johann. His hair was musty, his chin unshaven, and his front teeth were missing. Shazam, the old man said. Woo-wee, look at that fast thing. Johann stared and wondered. What's the story, he asked the man, expecting more of the old man's drunken nonsense. Look at me here, sitting on the sidewalk. I got my bottle here in my hand in a brown paper bag. God damn, I'm your story. Flapping his wings, Johann politely let the old man know it was about time to part. Don't you go yet, the old man said. I got something to tell you. Better be good, Johann replied. You gotta enhance your language, the man said. Stay around with me. You will, I promise. Johann's curiosity was tugged. Language? Right you are, little guy. I've got a vocabulary and more words than you've ever seen. Come on, maybe slang words, the gull replied. Oh no, real ones, like, look out there at that parking lot. Isn't it that hot red car? That must do 200 miles an hour when it's cruising. There's your language. You don't find that at no pelican beach. Seagull, Johann replied, I'm a seagull. Could have fooled me with that big mouth of yours, the old man said, and he let out a whooping laugh. It's the forms, son. Look at the forms. They're speaking to you. Johann gazed out at the parking lot. The shiny bright red car took all the attention because it was the only car in the lot and parked right at dead center. The wind picked up. The air got cold, really cold and it started to rain. Johann opened his eyes. Under the clouds, the moon had illuminated his surroundings enough that Johann could see the waves breaking against the sand. He thought about the other gulls surrounding him. The rain pounded down hard. Johann felt warm and good, and he fell back fast asleep. That morning when Johann awoke, he knew in his heart that he had conquered all and a great mysterious world lay ahead.